Okay, for this lesson, we're going to take a look at linear inequalities in two variables and how this is going to look graphically because obviously we can't put it on a number line because that will only apply to one variable. So first off, if we consider the inequality x plus y is less than or equal to 12, write a solution to this inequality. Well, any two numbers that you combine to make less than 12 are possible. I could say that x is 3 and y is 8. I could say that it could be negative 10 and positive 10. There are many, in fact, infinitely many solutions to this. So an inequality in two variables doesn't have one solution, but a set of ordered pairs as solutions. The set of ordered pairs can be represented graphically on a coordinate plane, as opposed to horizontally on that number line. When graphing inequalities in two variables, you have a couple of things to consider. First, do I draw a solid line or a broken boundary line? The difference between these two is solid means that it can equal the line. Broken means that it can't actually equal that point. The second question is, do I shade above the line or do I shade below the line? So, if I'm given the inequality, y is less than or equal to x plus 2. First thing, I need to graph this boundary line. So I'm going to start at my y-intercept of 2. And the slope is just going to be 1, because there's an imaginary 1 for the coefficient of x. So I go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, so on and so forth, or down 1, left 1, running through all these points. Now, when it says, is it solid or broken, well, in this case, it's going to be solid because it is less than or equal to, and that equal to is what makes that decision. So I'm going to connect these points into a solid line because any point on that line would also be a solution. Now, when I say, should I shade above or below the line, well, I'm going to jump ahead to the test point for this. If at all possible, as long as the line doesn't run through it, I can always use the point of 0 and 0. It's a great test point to see if this is true or not. So I'm going to take the inequality as it originally existed, and I'm going to say that 0 is less than or equal to 0 plus 2. 0 is less than or equal to 2, which is true. If it is true, then that means that this point exists within the solution region, and the solution region is everything in here. So in this case, did I shade above or below the boundary line? Well, if I start looking at my y-intercept, I shaded below where my y-intercept occurs to show my solution region. For the second example, then if I'm graphing this inequality, the first thing I need to do is I need to isolate y. Remember, if I need to multiply or divide by a negative in order to do this, I'm going to change the direction of the sign. So I'm going to say that if 2x plus 4y is greater than 8, then 4y is greater than, when I move it over, negative 2x plus 8. I'm going to divide everything by 4. y is greater than negative 1 over 2x plus 2. I'm going to start at my y-intercept of 2. And I have a slope of negative 1 over 2. So I'm going to go down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, or left 2, and up 1, left 2, up 1, left 2, up 1. Now, it's going to be a broken line because it does not include the equal to sign. So when I do this, I'm just going to connect these with a few dashes to show my line, but make sure that it's obvious that it is broken then I can check 
my test point of 0 and 0. I'm always going to check it based on the original inequality, not my modified one that I used to create the line. And the reason for this is, well, what if I made a mistake? What if I forgot to flip a sign? Whatever it happened to be. So I'm going to say that 2 times 0 plus 4 times 0 is greater than 8. 0 is greater than 8. This is incorrect, which means that that is not part of my solution region. My solution region is going to be on the other side of the line. And in this case, it was above the line that it got filled in. So, anytime the inequality, or y, is less than or greater than, use a broken line. Anytime that is less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, use a solid line. When y is less than, I shade below the boundary line, which we've seen with this first example. y is less than, and I had to shade in below. If it is greater than, like in example two, I'm going to shade above the boundary line. And the easiest test point to ever use is zero, zero. But remember, this only works or should only be used if the boundary line does not go through the origin, if the boundary line doesn't cross through that point of zero, zero. All right, if I have two positive real numbers m and n are related by the inequality 4m minus 3n is greater than or equal to 24. What are the restrictions on m and n? It said right here. They are positive real numbers, which means that m has to be greater than or equal to 0 where m, e, r. n has to be greater than or equal to 0, where n, e, r. I'm going to graph out the inequality. Well, if I'm going to graph it out, I need to decide which variable is going to go where. So I'm going to say that, well, n can be my vertical and m can be my horizontal. If that's the case, then I'm trying to isolate n in the inequality. So I'm going to say that if 4m minus 3n is greater than or equal to 24, then negative 3n is greater than or equal to negative 4m plus 24, or n, when I divide by negative 3, is going to be, flip the sign, less than or equal to negative 4 divided by negative 3 is just positive 4 over 3m, and 24 divided by negative 3 is going to be minus 8. Now, I can graph out the line. In this case, I can't see what my y-intercept would be, especially because it's going to be a negative number. So if I need a point to start, I could always solve for my horizontal intercept. So what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to replace n with 0. Which means that 4m would be greater than or equal to 24, or m would be greater than or equal to 6. So I'm going to start at the point of 6 and 0. And from there, I'm going to use my slope of up 4 and right 3. Up 4 and right 3. Because it includes the equal to, I'm going to do a solid line and say it's going to continue on forever. Because the n is less than, I'm going to fill in below the line. But I'm not going to go below that 
x-axis because we've already stated they have to be positive. What are some ordered pairs that would meet this requirement? Well, I can pick whatever points I want from in here. I could say that this point's going to work. I could say that this point's going to work. I could say that this point's going to work. So, what are three ordered pairs? Well, eight and one is in that region. 11 and 2 is in that region. 11 and 4 is also in that region. Remember, there's literally infinite possibilities for what the solutions could be. If I need to go in the opposite direction, well, this is pulling from my Math 10C skills of being able to solve what the line is. So first off, I'm going to figure out what the equation of the boundary line is. I'm going to say that this has a y-intercept at negative 2. I'm going to find another point that it goes to and say that to get to there I had to go down 2 and write 1. So my slope is going to be negative 2 over 1 or negative 2. The equation of this boundary line would be y is equal to negative 2x minus 2 and because it's a solid line and it's filled in above, I'm going to say that y is greater than, because it's filled in above, or equal to, because it's a solid line, negative 2x minus 2. I'm going to do the same process for the next one. I'm going to say that I have a y-intercept that I can see here at 1. I have a slope going to the next point where I have to go up 2 and rate 1 which means my slope is equal to 2 over 1 or 2. So my equation for the boundary line is going to be y is equal to 2x plus 1 and then in this case when I write my inequality in two variables, it's still filled in above, but it is not a solid line, so I'm not going to include the equal to 2x plus 1. And that's it.